the worst hit victims of nuclear radiation in Sweden and no doubt in other countries today are those who never profited from its supposed benefits, who lived in and from nature. Dr. Rosalie Battelle has been the voice of these and other victims of those who have been poisoned for profit. Since Chernobyl, the fragility of human health, our food supply, and domestic tranquility in the face of lethal nuclear fallout has become apparent to all. And yet, less than 5% of the poison from the Chernobyl reactor escaped to the environment. The other 95% was contained. And that's only one power plant. There will be embryonic, fetal, and infant deaths, congenital diseases and malformations, various degrees of genetic damage to future generations, and a variety of human tragedies officially lumped together under the phrase ill health. Most of these will not be officially recognized as problems in a world grown callous about random murder by technology. This award is also given for pioneering scientific work which goes unrecognized elsewhere because the findings do not suit the present scientific and political power structure. Dr. Stewart's early discoveries of the dangers of X-raying pregnant women have led to new regulations which have saved the lives of tens of thousands of young children. Life's very ironic. There have been many times in the last 30 years when I would like to have had just such an audience in front of me in order to convince them of the truth of what we were trying to discover about health effects of low-level radiation. And now that I'm here, I find that there isn't really anything I want to tell you, except to say thank you for recognizing that there are ways of arriving at the truth. This is the uh, so-called Oxford Survey of Childhood Cancers. It started at a time when there was a worldwide increase in leukemia prevalence, which nobody could discover the reason. Uh, leukemia was considered to be too rare a disease to have a survey, but I said the noticeable thing about this increase is that the children are being more affected than the grown-ups. Why don't we go to the mothers and ask them some questions? Well, it wasn't a very popular idea at the time, and uh, in fact didn't succeed in getting me any research funds but somebody managed to give me £1,000 non-recurring and I decided to use it to seek the help of Medical Officer of Health to implement the very simple idea I had, which was to go to the mothers of children who died of leukemia and see if by asking them systematic questions, they, the mothers who knew about their children, might be able to tell us, the arrogant doctors, what had really happened. It did so happen that the, we did unearth an event that had happened before birth, which the doctors knew had happened, but didn't realize what the consequences of it were. The event I'm referring to is a single exposure to a very small dose of ionizing radiation shortly before birth for what was at the time considered to be a perfectly safe examination. But I only want to say one thing. Are we going to, as caretakers of the present world, are we going to leave to the next generation that the level of poisonous is twice as high as it is today because we needed the energy? Thank you very much indeed for coming.